My name is Carrie Allen, and I am a consultant pharmacist. I'm here to talk to you today about the five elements of a great med pass. If you pass meds, you know that there's a lot more than five, but these are the five major basic areas that you should be concerned with when someone's watching you do a med pass, but also just on a day-to-day -day basis. Tubes and insulins. Are we going to go through all that in great detail? No, because it is so tricky, but let me give you the treetops highlights. Make sure you have privacy when you are doing tube meds and you're pulling that curtain. Make sure that you have privacy when you are doing insulin and that you are observing infection control. Make sure everything is in date and make sure that you have orders to crush things and make sure the things that you have orders to crush are actually crushable. Doctors don't always know which things are crushable and which are not. They're very, very busy. They're depending on pharmacy and nursing and med aids to catch these things for them. So we gotta do what we gotta do. Insulins. So let me show you a little bit about the insulin. This insulin is hum Humalog, and I love this sticker. I just love it. It has discard after, you know, 28 days. You could even put a date on there, such as discard on 1130. And it says, you know, 28 days after opening. And it also has the date opened. You need to have the date opened, and I really prefer that you also put the date that you need to discard it. And most insulins are 28 days, as I think we know, and I hope we all know that it's for sterility, meaning bacteria growth, yeast growth, those kind of things, rather than stability, whether or not the insulin will still work in most cases. But this way you don't have to calculate. You just say, hey, we're going to discard on this date, and we opened it on this date, and that's the way to go. Make sure that when you're putting those labels on here that you're not covering up the actual manufacturer's expiration or the lot number. Those are things that we need to have and the control number we need to have just in case there's a recall. There was recently a recall on heparin, for example, the vials, because there were glass particulates, so you need to be able to see those things. So you date when opened, and when it's expired, you use gloves, you have privacy. You never, ever pull up more than one insulin at a time. I did a med pass once where a girl just pulled up five different insulins for three different residents, didn't label anything, carried them all in a big bundle, and walked down to do it. And I said, whoa, no. Immediate jeopardy, we're not doing that. Killing people with insulin is not something that any of us are a fan of, and it can happen. You don't want to mix those up. If you were mixing insulins, and some are mixable, know which ones you can and cannot mix. Uh, there's a lot of uh, different forms out there that show which can be mixed and not mixed, and the package insert will also tell you that. If you're doing tubes, make sure, of course, you have crush orders. The meds are crushable. Keep that list at the front of your MAR book. Call the pharmacy if you need to. Get all that equipment ready. Make sure that you have the syringe to the flushes. Make sure that syringe was just open today. Make sure it's dated and in a package. It's not just laying around on the resident side table because that's gross. Check placement of the tube. Get those correct flushes in there. Use gravity. Don't push those meds in there. Make sure if you're crushing meds together, and this is a little controversial, that you can crush them together. It's ideal to do them separately, if at all possible, and sometimes it's not. Make sure that those meds aren't being given with feedings. For example, Dilantin cannot be given within an hour or two of the resident's feedings because it'll bind, and then their seizure med won't be absorbed won't be absorbed. We're going to continue this perhaps in a different series because there's so, so much to it.